My scripture today is taken from the Lamza translation of the Bible, St. Matthew, verse 1, chapter 1, verses 20 through 25. The angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, and he said to him, O Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take your wife Mary, because he that is to be born of her is of the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you will call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. All this happened that what was spoken from the Lord by the prophet might be fulfilled. Behold, a virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is interpreted, our God is with us. When Joseph rose up from his sleep, he did just as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and he took his wife, and he did not know her until she gave birth to her firstborn son, and she called his name Jesus. Thus ends the reading of our scripture, Matthew chapter 1, verses 20 through 25. Today is the third Sunday of Advent. Advent marks a period, a spiritual preparation leading up to Christmas, a time of preparing for the birth or the reawakening of our Christ consciousness. Each Sunday represents an aspect of our preparation, hope, peace or faith, love and joy. In some traditions, the third Sunday represents joy, and in others, such as the unity faith, it represents love. And for a moment, I got caught up in, well, which Sunday does this stand for, love or joy? Wanting to make sure I was correct, but then it occurred to me, does it really matter which is first, second, or third? Or is what is most important that we awaken these aspects within us during our sacred journey? My sermon today will focus on love and joy. As I contemplated Advent, I was led to dive deeper into the metaphysical understanding of Mary and what Mary represents in this phase of our spiritual growth. In the phase of giving birth or awakening our Christ consciousness. We will take the spiritual journey with Mary to Bethlehem and understand what she symbolizes in each of us. Scripture says Mary was a virgin, but yet she was with child. From a physical perspective, we look at this as being miraculous. How could a virgin conceive and be with child. Today, I'm going to ask you to look at this with me through the spiritual lens. Carrying a child represents the gestation period of new life, new ideas, a new consciousness. In this case, it is the gestation period of the Christ consciousness. With this new life, in the, while this new life is in the womb, it is growing and it is being nourished until it is time to give birth to it. Mary was impregnated 
with a physical child. But I believe she was also impregnated with a spiritual child, the Christ consciousness in her. The child scripture speaks of was the man Jesus. But the spiritual child is the Christ consciousness of Mary, just as the child of the Christ consciousness is in each of us. This Christ consciousness is in every man, woman, and child waiting, waiting and ready until we are ready to give birth to this new life. Mary has been venerated since the days of early Christianity as an, and is considered by millions to be the holiest and greatest saint. She is referred to many, by many, as Mother Mary. And many people pray to her, seeking guidance, healing, or to be consoled. Mary represents purity and holiness. So perhaps one could surmise that she too attained this higher level of consciousness in her life. During the sacred journey of Advent, we turn within to embrace the light of this new life within us, quieting our mind and focusing our attention on feeding this new life, spending time in meditation with our focus toward preparing ourselves for this great awakening. Interestingly, Christmas occurs around the same time as the winter solstice. This year, the winter solstice is celebrated on December 21st. The solstice is the shortest day of the year. It is also known as the hibernal solstice. And December 21st is the first day of winter. In the winter season, the earth is still. The earth is at rest. And as I was walking last week, it occurred to me, this earth that we think of in the solstice represents our physical self. Not only is mother nature at rest, but it is also time for our physical body to rest, to find solitude, and become dormant so that the spiritual nature of our soul may replenish and renew itself. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let all the earth or our physical self be still and renew itself in the peacefulness of this solitude. Hibernation is important for growth. Bears and other animals go into hibernation during the winter season, suspending all physical activity and allowing for this regeneration and rejuvenation to occur. And it is so important for our physical body to rest and allow our soul to be nourished and our spirit to be regenerated. Mary represents a phase of the soul. Through devotion, it is preparing itself for the higher life. 
the soul is continually seeking until it finds the truth and until it finds its allegiance with God. Giving birth or awakening the Christ consciousness is the next step of our spiritual progression. Mary also represents divine motherhood of love and our intuition. The female, the feminine side of our nature, the purification of our soul and our devotion to our spiritual unfoldment are necessary for this progression to occur. However, without the depths of the feeling quality of soul consciousness, without emotions such as love, life would be flavorless, like food without seasoning, a service rendered without the depth of love and feeling, without the very substance of our being, is empty. Our preparation includes feeding ourselves with divine love and awakening the divine love within us. Love is an integral part of our spiritual progression. We want to feel, we want to feel this raw emotion from the very depths of our soul to embrace the love of God flowing to us and that is within us, to feel the warmth of this love through every fiber of our being and to radiate this love out into the world. Simply put, we want to be love. Awakening to the realization that we are divine love. We want to be love and sprinkle love in all that we do. The Christmas holiday is filled with traditions, some dating back to our childhood, some passed down through the generations, from the traditions of decorating the tree in our homes, giving gifts, or preparing savory foods and baked goods. And as we partake in these festivities, it is important to remember to sow love in all we do, to give from the heart. <clears throat> For it is when we give from the heart that these gifts and what we share has the most meaning. So now I'm going to tie all of this together into our scripture lesson. The angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, and he told him not to be afraid and to take Mary as his wife because she was with child. Joseph represents wisdom, and as we learned, Mary represents love. This symbolizes aspects of us. At this stage in our progression, wisdom and love are uniting together. We can envision this new life. We can see it in our mind, but now we are bringing it forth into manifestation in substance. And through this union, they shall give birth to a child, and they will call him Jesus or Emmanuel, which is interpreted as 
God is with us. This new child, this new consciousness is our awareness that we are one with God. We have always been and we will always be one with God. The only difference is our awareness. Now we are fully awake to this realization. Initially, Joseph was going to put Mary away. This represents our hesitation in the early stages of the birth of the Christ because we may not fully understand the process. Perhaps we're not ready, or we may feel that we are undeserving. Sometimes it is a process and it may be moved away from us until we are fully ready to embrace it. It's like turning on the light switch with that dimmer Sometimes we need to start out slowly on the dimmest until our eyes or until we are ready to fully embrace the illumination of the brightness of the light. And in this case, until we are ready to accept the full illumination of our soul. Joseph or our wisdom did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took Mary or love as his companion until they gave birth to this new life of the Christ. And that brings us full circle to love and joy. When the soul awakens to the highest truth, and we unite wisdom and love, the soul experiences profound joy. The profound joy of the light of God within us. When we experience on a physical level the depth of our soul's illumination, that is the greatest gift we will ever receive. Feeling the love in our heart. Feeling, feeling our oneness with God. Knowing in the mind is one thing, but feeling from the heart takes it to a whole new level. Feeling love and joy from the depths of our soul and from the very core of our being uniting the physical and the spiritual in this understanding that we are divine love. Each of us is impregnated with the Christ consciousness and it is up to us as to when we are ready to bring forth this new life. In the stillness, we hear the whispers of our soul calling to us, calling to us to awaken, preparing ourselves for this new life and feeding the soul with spiritual food, feeding the soul with hope, faith, peace, love, and joy. As we unite wisdom and love to give birth to the Christ within us. Many blessings to you as you prepare yourselves to awaken on your spiritual journey during the season of Advent. Namaste.